Hello everyone. Welcome to Lady Applejack Speaks VA, a VA channel here on YouTube that focuses on the Netflix series Stranger Things. Um, sorry, my chair is a little bit creaky. You guys hear that, but um, that's not what we're here about. Hi. <laughs> I was actually getting ready to um, send some information to one of my close friends about this channel, about an episode actually about the video that I posted on Saturday um, with updates. And I realized that the sound audio was very, very short. Like initially it was like 25 minutes long and it was cut down to 17 minutes. I don't know what happened there. Um, so I'm going to totally like scrap that and start over, which I feel like I need to start over anyways, because I feel like I was being... I feel like I censored myself a lot in that video. And I'm, I'm here to kind of explain why I feel that way. So for starters, um, I want to thank each and every one of you over the course of a year and a half that have reached out to me and have kept contact with me and shown their love and solidarity and support for my channel, my channel and my content. And yeah, I'm, I'm getting a little bit nervous talking but i i hope i hope i could do this right i'm going off script haha ha. i don't have a script for this but um we're going to try it we're going to give this a try so in my previous video i was telling you guys about um about some of the updates i had where i went you know what's life like right now and then the future of this channel um when i made that video i tend to censor myself quite a bit and I feel like the best thing to do is just come out and say it and come out with the truth and and kind of talk about what's been going on and why I left the community for a year and a half um there's been many different reasons um and I'm not saying any of them are right that I left the community um and I feel like I owe you all an explanation because I had so many people that that loved my stuff surprisingly enough and who supported me and I feel like I almost let them down because I went on hiatus and first and foremost I need to say that this hiatus was not supposed to be a year and a half it was only supposed to be a month if that and it ended up being a lot longer and there are reasons for that and which I'm going to explain now. Um, so to start with, the first reason why I kind of disappeared was because my mental health was not doing great at that moment in my life. Um, I was struggling a lot with my, uh, with my self-esteem. Um, when you suffer from depression, suffer from anxiety, or in my case, borderline personality disorder, you struggle with you struggle with your self-esteem and you struggle with comparing yourself to others, even though you shouldn't be. Like logically, you know that comparing yourself to somebody else is the stupidest thing you could do because um, everybody else is different. That's what makes us unique. I still did it. You know, because my, my brain is wired to be like that because of my mental illness. And I'm trying to figure out how to unwire it from that and be kind of, I don't know, somewhat normal. I'm not, I don't like the term normal because nothing is really normal, at least in my opinion. So let's talk about um, why I felt that way. So for starters... I was struggling because I kind of noticed that my numbers were dwindling a little bit on my later on um, videos. Um, my content wasn't getting that much of a following anymore. And I started questioning whether or not my content was any good to begin with. And I, on top of that, we were also moving into the period of AI technology, and I was struggling with that. 
um, it's very difficult to be on a platform and see that. Okay, sorry about that. I, I actually had to pause this for a second because I was talking to somebody um, that entered my office. So we're, we're back. We're back. Um, now I just got to remember what I was trying to say. Um, so it was very hard for me to to accept um, that my numbers were dwindling. And then on top of that, AI had started to really take off in the VA community. And I was struggling with that. I, I still struggle with AI technology, I think. I, I don't particularly care for it. I feel like it takes the magic out of doing voice acting. But that's just my opinion. I don't knock it if that's what a creator wants to use. In fact, I follow quite a few creators on the on YouTube that do voice acting with AI technology, and they're amazing. They, their work is brilliant. Um, I just can't personally do it. And I felt guilty for that, and I felt like my stuff wasn't nearly as good as those people. And then it made it very hard for me to to not believe that and to believe that my work was worthy of attention and was worthy of some sort of notoriety, whatever that case may be. Um, when I realized that there was creators out there that were brand new to the VA community and on there for less than a month and they had already... 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 subscribers. And it was, it was really upsetting. It was really sad and difficult. And it's no one's fault, obviously. That's just, you know, you like what you like. But it felt like I did not fit into the community anymore. So while this is all going down, while I'm struggling with what's going on in my head, I had another very violating thing happen, and that is that someone that I considered a friend, a very close friend, I guess, or at least a, a close acquaintance, maybe friend is not the best words to describe it, um, this acquaintance that I thought I could trust and that I thought was a, just a genuine fan of my stuff because they were commenting all the time on my stuff. I thought, oh, awesome. This person can be trusted. They turned around and they stole my content. And they went onto their own platform and started using, like, storylines that belong to me. In addition, they started using things that I had made unique to my series and it was very obvious my my uniqueness that was coming through they took that and started using that into their content that they were writing um it's nobody here on youtube i'm going to go ahead and say that right now it's nobody here that has like a youtube channel but they do have a following on another very public, very, very talked about app right now. Um, and yeah, I, I kind of found out one day in passing while I was watching their, their channel. Just, you know, watching their, their videos because they had some videos up and I saw that my content was roughly stolen and I don't know I know I'm saying and 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 I'm sorry about that I don't know about you guys though um I know that people sometimes say that you know impersonating or or um copying is a form of flattery it's very hard to use that as a justifiable excuse when it's your creative art that's being taken from you. Um, it's a very violating feeling to have your art, art, your craft that you worked so hard to master over the years taken from you. And I went to college for writing. 
Um, I was a journalism major, and then I also dabbled in creative writing. I was an editor on the newspaper. Um, I'd been writing stories for a long time. I worked for two different newspapers, actually, and, and I did a lot of writing that got a lot of notoriety when I was in high school. Um, so it's, it's, it's more than just a craft for me. It's literally my life. And I know that might be a little bit like cynical or like people might think that I'm being a little extreme, but if you're an artist, you understand how I feel. Um, your artwork is a huge part of you. And when you see your artwork being taken or being abused in some way, it's, it's extremely, extremely upsetting. So this person um, stole my content. And in addition to that, um, they kind of got a very unhealthy obsession about me. And they also, if, if that isn't enough, it's, it's just like, it's one thing after another. Um, this person also caused me to have one of my worst breakdowns I had that I've ever had in all my years of life. Um, this person, long story short, they put out a video that went viral on this particular social media platform that I'm referencing. Um, I think everybody knows what platform I'm talking about, but you know. So they went ahead and put out this video that was considered very cringe inside the Stranger Things fandom. And without my consent or the consent of another creator, they tagged our names on it. I'm not going to mention the other creator, but it's a, another creator that I love and respect and I'm really close to. Um, and it made our lives literally a living hell. Um, we both suffered a lot from it. Um, I, in particular, I'm not going to speak for the other creator because the other creator has their own story. Um, and I want to respect their wishes not to indulge in that information for them. So I'm speaking from my own personal experience. And I am... It caused me to have a nervous breakdown. In short, that, that's what happened. Um, I was getting bullied by people that thought I was a part of the cringe factor and the fandom. Um, it got to the point where it got so bad that people were coming on YouTube and making comments about my, my work. And it was very upsetting. And then they were making comments on the social media platform that I was also on. And it was relentless. And that afternoon when I found out about all this, I'm trying not to get upset. Um, that afternoon when I found out that this was happening, it was already like too late. A lot of people were already making comments about my uh, videos and making comments about my stuff on TikTok and and my stuff on other social media platforms. I guess I let the cat out of the bag. It was TikTok that this happened on. Um, it got so bad to the point where I tried to unalive myself. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh. That's literally the first time I have said that out loud. I'm used to writing it because there are a couple people that I told this to. Um, uh, geez. So I tried to unalive myself because the bullying got so bad and I couldn't, I couldn't think of any other thing to do besides 
I wanted to be out of that situation. I didn't want to deal with it any longer. And um, my husband actually found me and was able to find me in enough time that I'm still here today. And I think it, by the grace of God, it was one of those things that just... <sighs> Normally, he usually works outside the house, and that day he was home. And um, if he wasn't home, I, would, I, I wouldn't be here today. That, that's, basically, that's basically what boils down to. So, I was dealing with that. And he also had reached out to this person and begged them to take the video down. They wouldn't take it down because they said that they had just gone viral and they didn't want to lose out on the opportunity of getting additional followers. <laughs> My life was basically peanuts in comparison to this person's desire to want to be a, an influencer if that's what you want to call it so I had to take a step away from my mental health obviously because everything was starting to come to a head I already had the feeling that my writing wasn't good enough and then I had people random people coming and not even giving me like even a chance to to I don't know, prove that I'm not like this other person. And they're telling me that my my craft is garbage too. And it's already bad enough that I could tell myself that every single given day of my life. It's another thing to hear it from another person. So I was really, really depressed. And I had to take a step away for my own sanity. And I was sick and tired of seeing my stuff either being drugged through the cringy mud or being stolen from this person because they continued to steal my content long after I left. And I, I just had enough. I was not happy anymore. Um, all my happiness was taken away from me in one swift blow. So I went into a permanent hiatus, at least for that time, it was permanent. Um, prior to this all happening, I was going to take a week, not a week off, a month off anyways, just to kind of regroup and collect myself and work on my mental health. And then that happened, and then I did not want to participate at all at that point. I wanted to stop writing altogether, which is the worst thing for me to do because writing writing is like my form of a therapy and I really enjoy developing characters and 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 doing scripts and writing scripts and and performing them for you guys but it just felt like everything was stacked against me um there's this saying that uh Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park said before he had passed away and it rings so true when you're dealing with mental illness. Like, he's like, you know, that place between these ears, and he was talking about his head, he kept po pointing to his head. He's like, that is a dangerous, dangerous neighborhood, and I should not be walking through it at night. And that resonated with me so much because that's how I felt about myself. Like, I knew that, that like, dwelling on, oh, you could do this better, you could do that better, um, you're a shit writer, you, you don't know what you're doing, nobody likes you, nobody likes your content. Hearing that on repeat every single day in your brain, it kills you. But then you have these strangers on the internet coming after you because you feel... Because they feel like you might be not such a good person. Like this person is not such a good person. So, recently, I wasn't going to bring this up at all on any of my platforms. And then it just finally dawned on me 
Saturday that I not only do I need to do it for myself, it's almost like a therapeutic thing for myself, but I owe you guys an explanation as to why I bailed. Um, you guys deserve at least the explanation of some sort to explain why I had stopped actively pursuing this channel. So, yeah, those are the main two reasons. I, I was dealing with being stuck in my own head and watching all these other VA channels grow in popularity, whereas I was still staying stagnant. And then on top of that, I had people stealing my artwork or my, my, my scripts and spinning it so they can make it their own. And like leaving the obvious signs that they still belong. It, they were my scripts to start with, if that makes any sense. Since then, I have blocked this person. I blocked them on this, this platform as well as a couple other platforms out there. And um, this person, like I said, has a hyperfixation on me. They know my address. I'm not quite sure how that happened. Um, I don't know. I, I can't remember at this point. But we, my husband and I, when I say we, we're collectively looking into possibly following a restraining order um, to be on the safe side because this person has said that they wanted to come see me. And as you guys could probably imagine, that is very, very scary. Um, I have been the victim of a, a stalking situation before. My um, One of the guys that I used to go out with had stalked me for years. And I was finally able to get away from him. And I had to completely uproot and move to a different part of the state to get away from him um so naturally naturally i'm terrified um because i don't want to repeat this again the first time with with this guy was more than enough and and now i'm having to deal with it again and it's really really upsetting because yeah it doesn't feel good for somebody to be Knowing every single little thing about you, even though you don't think you don't think it's out there, it, and th they somehow find out things, and yeah. So that's where I'm at with things right now. Um, that's why I was gone for such a long time, and I was working on myself. Um, I'm still working myself to this day. I go to therapy um, once a month. And my doctor has had to do a lot of things to help with me, help me with my trauma past and present and the trauma of having your artwork taken from you or your, your creative, you, the things that you worked so hard for taken from you. And then in addition, having to deal with unwanted attention from a, a certain individual, um, I going into therapy, I was in really bad shape. I was not only thinking constantly of hurting myself, I was also thinking of what happens when this person shows up to my on my doorstep. And it wasn't a question of if, it was always a question of when. Um, I was having night tears because it was so bad. Um, I was scared to leave the house. Uh, there was so many things going on. Uh, I was scared to trust people. Even people that I knew wouldn't hurt me. But at the same time, I was still struggling with trust. Um, the doctor had to put me on Trazodone to help with the night tears. Um, they had to put me on Seroquel to help with the panic attacks. There were so many things that that I had to do in order to rebuild myself again. And I didn't start writing until a month or so ago. I, I stopped writing altogether. Um, and as you guys probably remember, I'm, I 
have been writing a book for the last three years. I even stopped writing the book for a long period of time because of my, of all this. And I didn't know, I felt like I was wasting time. And I lost the true meaning of, of art and the, you know, why why I made art to start with, why I, I did writing, why I painted, anything creative. I lost that experience or, or that love because I I had let somebody take it from me. And I've already dealt with so much trauma in my life that I'm tired of people taking things from me and 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 either claiming it as their own or saying that's garbage. I'm really tired of it. And I am at that point in my life that I don't want to do it anymore. So what's this mean for the channel? Um, what's this mean for the future of Lady Applejack Speaks VA? I'm kind of still figuring that out myself. Um, I'm going to have my good days. I'm going to have my bad days. And that's just the way it is. Some days are going to be easier. Some days I probably won't want to write or I won't want to do a voice recording. But right now I want to tell you guys one thing that I am certain about. And that is I'm certain that I want to continue on this journey with you guys. I want to continue writing for Lady Applejack Speaks VA. Whether I have four likes or 400 likes um whether i have one subscriber or a thousand i want to continue doing something that i love and that is writing and that is in this case script writing for um characters using characters of my own but also using characters from stranger things and maybe other fandoms as well so that's where i'm at with this right now and um, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm a little scared. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen from this point on. Um, like I said, I blocked this person from basically all my social media. Um, so I can have a clean slate and hopefully get back to a place where I'm happy again with, with my art and I'm happy and content i guess um so yeah that's where i'm at with things right now it's going to be a slow up build um i'm hoping to start doing audios at least presenting scripts at least once a week um and then going from there maybe i will do scripts for all three of the series in one week maybe i won't i'm still kind of navigating that path but with this most recent script, I gotta tell you guys that I am so happy that I did it. I Writing it brought me back to that place where I found joy. And simply just in, do, in doing something creative for once. And yeah, for a minute, I didn't care about numbers. I didn't care about the fact that somebody might need I might need to get a restraining order against somebody. I didn't think about the time a person stole my creative my creativity and made it their own in in such a disrespectful way. Like I guess there's no way to be respectful when you're stealing shit, right? But you know what I'm saying. So that's where I'm at with things. And I want to ask you guys to be on that journey with me. I know that's a big ask. I know that maybe some of you think that I that I am a quitter or that I'm unreliable and and all I can say is I'm really sorry for that and I really hope I really hope that you guys give me a second chance. So yeah, that's where we're at with things right now. Um, I got some really fun ideas for the channel. Um, 
my goal is to finish out the first three series that I had um, still outstanding on the channel. And then I got some ideas for some future scripts, uh, one of which I think you guys will be very excited about. I'm looking at doing a resurgence of um, my first series, the, the small town series, where we follow Eddie Munson and uh, Liz and... Um, we follow them for a little while. I'm not sure exactly, you know, time frame wise what that's going to look like, but that is something I'm kicking around in my head. And I'm also, I'm also going to be like, go like stray away from my old fashioned ways. And I'm looking at doing a live or something of that nature on the channel here soon. Um, and I kind of was kicking around some ideas with my husband while I was talking to him about this. He's really excited that I'm getting back into this. Um, I was kicking some ideas around with him and I told him that I was kind of thinking of, of spinning it as a 80s slumber party where we all convene on a live and, you know, I'll put on some cheesy 80s music and we'll sit there and we'll talk about stranger things or talk about writing or whatever questions that you guys may have you know, I, i'm i'm pretty much an open book um i would love to hear from you guys and i would love for you to be a part of this journey so if if you can that's awesome and if you can't i will try to understand that but other than that that's all i got and i love you guys so very much um thank you for those who stayed and I want to give special thanks out to, obviously, Lexi from Lexi VA um, for being a huge inspiration to me and for kind of being my person I could vent to. Um, I also want to thank my friend Joey. Uh, Joey has been extremely supportive in my journey. And if it wasn't for Joey, I don't think I'd be writing now. So thanks, Joey. And uh, to so many others, Becky, um, let's see, who else? Becky, Parker, Emily, all those people that were with me at the very beginning and still with me to this day, I love you guys. You all, I just love you guys. I'm very lucky. I, I, I don't see you guys as fans i have a hard time i feel like it's almost pompous to say fans um i see you guys as friends and i'm very very lucky to have such an awesome friend base and <sighs> yeah i think that's where i'm going to end it at but thank you all so much for listening if you made it this far and I'll see you when a new episode drops this week. All right. Bye, guys.